always boaters out on the lake and the uh, uh, the neighbor kids, we'd catch them out there skiing. There's the fishermen coming up here trying to catch bass out from under the dock. Children at the end of the street would be on their tire swings yelling hi neighbors and, and the boaters would all come from miles around. It, it was just a fantastic place. It's where we chose to spend the rest of our lives. Right before Christmas, uh, that coal ash dike gave across from us. It, it gave way and uh, it washed all the, the coal ash over in our property over here. And it, uh, it changed our lives. Just two short years after the TVA Kingston coal ash spill, many have already forgotten its impacts on the community and the environment. And yet, it was six times larger in volume than the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So how clean is clean coal technology? So Donna, you were one of the first people to actually see Ground Zero. What did it look like and how did it make you feel to be kayaking through this place right after the spill? So where we're sitting right now, you can see water here now. But when I was here on December 27th, it was completely inundated with ash. And I was surrounded by giant 10 foot tall ashbergs, we called them and the water was gray and black. As we're paddling up, there were these giant rafts of ash and debris, and it was so thick and so foul that we could not paddle through it. And then when we approached it, of course, every time we reached into the water, we'd just pick up dead fish after dead fish after dead fish. It was the most horrific and gut-wrenching environmental disaster I've ever seen on a waterway. Fly ash is the hidden cost of clean coal technologies. Power plants now capture many of the byproducts of coal combustion that used to pollute our air. Today, those byproducts end up in coal ash, another form of hazardous waste that must be managed. So are the heavy metal compounds in the coal ash something people should be concerned about? Well, uh, I think everything has to be put in perspective. There are heavy, trace amounts of heavy metals in ash, uh, as there are in the soil in your front yard. But wouldn't coal ash have it um, concentrated? It and, is. And more it, so than in soil? Uh, no, no, the parts per million, so concentration is still the same, really. If the coal ash isn't any more concentrated with heavy metals than dirt, why all the effort to take it out of the river? Um, well, first of all, it doesn't belong there. It was, it was blocking the river. Uh, it was creating a flooding hazard. And to be honest with you, dumping 5.4 million cubic yards of dirt in the water is not something you want to do. The truth is, coal ash is simply not dirt. The byproducts of coal combustion contain selenium and heavy metals, including arsenic, mercury, and lead, which can leach into water systems and work their way into drinking water and up food chains. Biologist Anna George has been studying the changes in the Emory River fish population since the spill. She took me out on an electro fisher to show me her findings. Yeah, so that's ash swirling up in there. What was your experience with the spill? We were up here 18 days after the spill occurred in January of 2009. It's a very weird feeling to lose that much of an ecosystem just in an instant like that. What's more disturbing is just the long-term changes that you know are going to come. Smell that buffalo? fish continue to be in pretty poor health in this area. This, this is not look healthy, right? No, no. That's, that's typically a sign of stress, uh, but, but this is more of a problem. Uh, the fin erosion is, is something you, you see a little bit more in, in degraded environments. There's a lot of lesions on the fish. There's parasites that they probably wouldn't normally succumb to. And then there's condition called Popeye, which means their eyes are literally bulging out of their head. Um, and so these are all things just showing that their immune system has been compromised that they've had to face a lot of stress in the past year. Come on. With over 130 million tons of coal ash produced each year in the U.S. alone, and more than 2,000 ash dumps across the country, water pollution from coal-fired energy production is far from an isolated issue. I met ecotoxicologist Bill Hopkins to explore how coal ash ponds in South Carolina are impacting the surrounding wildlife. My concern after studying these for you know, 15, 16 years is that when we mix these materials with water, we are creating this long-term legacy of contamination in aquatic systems because it doesn't just go away. I mean, you're basically pumping the stuff into these ponds, uh, and when you do that, 
you may not be um, uh, breaching any sort of uh, water quality criteria, but over the long haul, when you've got hundreds of these plants all over the place, what is that doing? You know, what is that actually doing to these systems uh, uh, in terms of ecological damage over decades and decades? God, it's so beautiful. So this is a tiger salamander. So um, what you see in salamanders is that their hands and their feet will actually melt off their bodies yeah, when it yeah. comes into contact so, with the ash. So if they, if they spend too much time in contact with ash, what will happen, the little digits there that you see, um, those will actually begin to erode. And we don't understand mechanistically how it happens, but when you come in contact with that ash, it, it disturbs that skin and it basically begins to eat it away. You know, we've, we've done experiments and demonstrated very clearly that ash causes that. The TBA situation really, I think, escalates this in the public eye. Um, people start to pay attention to it because uh, sort of the magnitude of the situation. But the bigger issue is the chronic, long-term um, uh, disposal of these wastes in aquatic systems. To me, that is really the, the big issue. So and it's happening across the country. Across the country, yeah. But some would say that that's the cost of energy. That's the cost of powering our homes and powering our communities and our societies. Is this a cost that you think we should bear? It's the old cost of doing energy, and it's certainly not the future. Um, but if we continue business as usual, this kind of dirty source of energy, coal, um, will contribute to global warming of the planet. These coal-fired power plant stacks, they contribute mercury that lands on our waterways and poisons our fish. They create these giant ash pits that are full of heavy metals. We can choose not to do that anymore. We have that within our power to talk to our government leaders all over the world and make a transition to sustainable choices of energy like wind and solar. We'll come and listen. Moving beyond coal is possible. We can and must start planning that transition today. And part of that plan has to be regulating and managing coal ash as a hazardous waste, so our children aren't left with the costs of our cheap energy and lack of vision. Till the stream of your blood runs as black as the coal, where it's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew. Where the danger is double and the pleasures are few Where the rain never falls, the sun never shines It's dark as a dungeon way down in the mine Well there's many men I've known in my day To live just to